Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I will be doing IGCSE physics, all types of questions related to forces. So previously I've done types, different types of questions related to motion, so make sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. Now in this video I'll be focusing on forces and all the types of questions related to it. So this includes momentum, moments, impulse, uh, yeah. So let's start with the first question. Figure 2.1 shows an athlete crossing the finishing line in a race. As she crosses the finishing line, her speed is 10 meters per second. She slows down to a speed of 4 meters per second. So A reads, the mass of the athlete is 71 kgs. Calculate the impulse applied to her as she slows down. So impulse. So for impulse, the formula is change in momentum. So the final momentum or minus the initial momentum. So it's going to be mv minus mu. So her mass is 71 kgs. So it's going to be 71 times. So, so her final speed is 4 meters per second because she slows down to 4 meters per second. So 71 times 4 minus 71 times 10, which is her initial speed. So this is going to be 71 times 4 is 284. So 284 minus 710. So that's going to be 426. So this, the negative signs means that the impulse is on the opposite direction of her motion. So we can just write 426. Let's move on to the next one. Define impulse in terms of force, time, force and time. So basically impulse is the product of force and time. So what we write here is it's the product of of force and time. That's going to be our answer. So for the next one, the athlete takes 1.2 seconds to slow down from a speed of 10 meters per second to a speed of 7, 4 meters per second. Calculate the average resultant force applied to the athlete as he slows down. So if you asked the resultant force, that means we're going to use the formula force equals mass times acceleration. So we were given the mass in the previous question, which is 71 kilograms. But then to find the acceleration, we have to calculate using the formula. So acceleration is the final speed minus the initial speed over time. So the final speed is 4 meters per second. The initial speed is 10. So we're going to do 4 minus 10 over the time is 1.2. So when we calculate this, it's going to be 5. So this is going to be, this is going to be negative 5, but then we can write it as 5 because the negative just implies that the force or the acceleration is in the opposite direction. So we have 5, which is the acceleration. So the mass is 71. So the force is going to be 71 times 5. That's going to be 355. So it's going to be 355 newtons. We move on to the next question. Calculate the force required to give a mass of 71 kgs and acceleration of 6.4 meters per second. So this 
question is also asking us for the force which is required uh, to move a mass of 71 kgs at an acceleration of 6.4 meters per second squared so we, we use the same formula over here force equals mass times acceleration so it's going to be 71 point 71 times 6.4 so that's going to be 454.4 454.4 newtons let's move on to the next question figure 2.1 shows an object of mass 2 kg so we're talking about this object on the bench the, this object is connected by a cord passing over a pulley to an object of 3 kg. So this 2, ki 2 kg object is connected by a cord. By this cord. And then it's connected to a 3 kg object. And then we have a pulley in between. So the 2 kg object is released from rest and accelerates at 4 meters per second squared. So we're given the mass and the acceleration. A. Calculate the resultant force acting on the 2 kg object. So to find the resultant force for the 2 kg object, what we do is we use the formula force equals mass times acceleration so mass is 2 kgs so it's going to be 2 times 4 which is going to be 8 so it's going to be 8 newtons so the force is a newton b calculate the upward force exerted by the cord on the 3 kg object so to find the force exerted by the cord what we do is okay let, let's go back to the diagram and then we have the force over the object over here which is 3 kgs and then first we have to find the resultant force acting acting on the 3 kg object we're given the acceleration for this object which is 4 meters per second squared but then the weight of this one is resulting in the acceleration of this one. That means the uh, acceleration is going to be the same. So to find the resultant force of this object is going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. So this is the resultant force. Now we, ha we have to find the weight, which is a downward force. So to find the weight, it's the mass multiplied by 10 or the gravitational acceleration so that's going to be 3 times 10 which is going to be 30 newtons this is 30 newtons so to find the upward force exerted by the cord that means we, we subtract the forces so we subtract the 30 newtons which is the weight and then 12 newtons which is the resultant force so we're going to do 30 minus 12 which is going to be 18 newtons and that's our final answer the objects have a constant acceleration so that the speed of the objects 0 0.8 seconds after release is 3.2 meters per second so to do this question Firstly, we know that the acceleration is constant, we're given here, and the acceleration is basically the change in speed over time. So acceleration is the change in speed over the time. So if the acceleration is constant, that means previously we were given the acceleration, which is 4 meters per second squared, so that means it's going to be 4. And then we have the change in speed over the time, which is 0 
so we can do simple cross multiplication and then that change in speed is going to be 3.2 So that's how you can easily solve it. A card with width of 2 cm is fixed on the 2 kg object. As the 2 kg object moves to the left, the card passes through the beam of light that is perpendicular to the card. Using the speed given in CI, this is the speed given, 3.2 m per second, Calculate the time taken for the card to pass through the beam of light. For this question, let's go back to the image. Let me clear everything out so it's more visible. So this is the card we're talking about, which is 2 centimeters in width. So the question tells that it's fixed to the 2 kg object and when the 2 kg object is moving left the card passes through a beam of light that is perpendicular to the card so on this question we're asked the time so we have the formula that, that the speed is equals to distance over time so when we rearrange the formula time is going to be equal to that speed over distance so I made a mistake it's gonna be the time is gonna be the distance over the speed so for the distance we have two centimeters but then we have to change it into meters so it's going to be 0 0.02 so it's going to be 0 0.02 meters over the speed, which is 3.2. So when we divide this, what we get is 0 0.0063. 0 0.0063. Seconds. Now, we can write this in standard, standard form, but this one is also okay the next question so this type of question almost always appears in paper four exams and it almost always carries four marks or more so let's see this question also has four marks so make sure you know exactly how to do these types of questions figure 3.1 shows a boat stored in a field in a shed the boat is suspended from the ceiling of the shed by two ropes the tension in each rope is 75 newtons. Draw a vector diagram to determine the resultant of the forces exerted by the two ropes on the boat. State which scales you have used. So firstly, we need to come up with a scale. To come up with a scale, first we need to see what the tension of each rope is. So the tension of each rope is 75 Newton. So we can say that one centimeter is equals to 20 Newtons. So that means if we have 75 Newtons, we're gonna have X. So we can rearrange this and then it's gonna be 75 over 20 which is 3.75 so it's going to be 3.75 centimeters we also need to be careful about the angles we're given so over here both angles are 60 degrees so for this question what we use is called a parallelogram rule so to do this first we need to draw a parallelogram based on this scale and these angles. So let me move to the right to get more space. So if the tensions of this is this direction and for the other rope is that direction, so that means the resultant force is somewhere in the middle and then it's going to go vertically up. 
so the resultant force is going to be vertically upwards. So to find the magnitude of the resultant force, what we do is first we have to draw a parallelogram. We draw one side of the parallelogram and draw it at 60 degrees and then make sure it's 3.75 centimeters. So we have our ruler here. So we can draw One centimeters, two, three, then three point seven five, somewhere around here. So now we draw another line at sixty degrees to this line. So make sure this line is also three point seven five because both tensions are 75 newtons. Finally, we can draw another line downwards, which is also at 60 degrees and should be 3.75 centimeters. This is also 3.75. Now we just need to join this. We just need to join this parallelogram and finish it. Now it's complete. Finally, we just have to measure the distance between this point, the up, uppermost point, and the distance between the upper lowest point, the most lowest point. So if we measure it, it's going to be approximately 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.5. So this line is going to be 6.5 centimeters. So we can remove the ruler. And then if the line is going to be 6.5, according to our scale, we have to multiply it by 20. So 6.5 times 20, that's going to be 130. So the resultant, the magnitude is 130 newtons. So to answer this question, the scale is going to be one centimeter equals 20 newtons the magnitude of the resultant force is going to be 130 newtons and then the direction of the resultant force is going to be upwards so if you do this question correctly you can get uh, four marks which is a lot the next question, determine, determine the mass of the bolt. So to find the mass, we already know that the resultant force is going to be 130 newtons. So this is also the same as the weight. Because the bolt is being carried from a ceiling, that means the downward force is the same as the upward force. So the weight is 130. So to find the mass, we divide by 10. So it's going to be 13 kgs. The next question, force is a vector. Draw a circle around two other quantities in the list which are vector. So this is an easy question. One of them is acceleration. And then the other one is going to be momentum. All the other are scalar quantities. We move on to the next question. Figure 2.1 shows a spring balance used to measure the weight of a baby. The spring inside the balance extends when a mass is suspended from it. 
the dial shows the extension spring has the value of mass in kg so the, here the diagram so this is uh, used to measure the mass of the baby and then a spring is extended when the baby the baby is got hanging on the hook so the first question is the, sp the spring obeys hook slow up to a weight of 175 newton we have to underline this state hook slow so hook slow states that the extension of a uh, spring is directly proportional to the force so the extension of a spring is directly proportional to this to the load in this case the load is the baby the next one states the relationship between the mass of the baby and the force extended on the spring due to the baby this question they're basically asking us to to state the relationship between the mass and the force of the baby ex exerted on the spring which basically means weight because the downward force due to the baby is mass is going to be the for the weight so we can write weight is equals to mass times gravity then we'll be able to get the full marks the reading on the spring is 8 kilogram determine the force exerted on the spring due to the baby in this question it's also asking about the weight so the weight is going to be the mass which is 8 kgs it's going to be 8 times 10 which is going to be 80 newtons The next one says the limit of proportionality for the spring is at a force of 175 newtons. Sketch the extension load graph of for the spring. The sketch must continue beyond the force of 175 newton. So we stated that earlier in the question the extension is directly proportional to the load. So on a graph we show proportionality by drawing a straight line from the origin. So we can do that. Straight line from the origin. And then after okay, so the limit of proportionality is 175 newtons. So after 175 newton, that means hook slow will not be obeyed anymore. So this straight line would is gonna bend either way. So after 175 newton, it can bend this way. So this could be the graph, and that's how you obtain the two marks. C. The baby is carried from the ground floor to the bedroom. The vertical height of the bedroom above the ground floor is 3.5 meters. Calculate the change in gravitational potential energy of the baby when it's carried from the ground floor to the bedroom. So... To find gravitational potential energy, the formula is mass times gravity times height. So the mass of the baby is given, which is going to be 8 kilogram. So we do 8 times 10 times 3.5. So that's going to be 280. So 280 joules. So we'll move on to the next question. Define the moment of a force. So the moment of a force can be defined as the force times the, per the perpendicular distance. So the force times perpendicular distance. It's important to mention that the distance is the perpendicular distance. 
otherwise you could lose some marks. We can move on to the next one. Figure 2.1 shows an object of negligible weight. The object is in equilibrium. The object is free to rotate about its pivot P. So this is the object we're talking about. And it has 50 kgs of mass. So the object is free to rotate about its pivot P. So this is a pivot P. This is a point. Calculate the value of force F. So this force F is downward. So to solve this question, what we do is we use con conservation of moment. So that that means in for an object in equilibrium, the anti-clockwise moment is the same as the clockwise moment, or the moment in both directions are equal. So for this one, we have 20 cent centimeters. And then this uh, mass of 50 kgs is acting sideways. But then we have to change this mass into weight first. So it's going to be 500 newtons. Newtons. So to find F first, we have to find the moment acting clockwise. So it's going to be 20 times 500, which is going to be 10,000. Sorry, it's going to be 1,000. Yeah, it's going to be 10,000. Sorry about the confusion. So the anti the clockwise moment is going to be 10,000. And so it's got 10,000. So to solve this, we're going to have F. So 12 times F, it should be equal to 10,000. So we should do 12 F. It should be equal to 10,000. So we can do over 12. Over 12 on both sides. So to find F, we divide 10,000 by 12. So it's going to be... Eight hundred thirty thirty three point three. Now we can round down. We can round that and then we can write eight hundred thirty three. Or we can just write that as eight hundred thirty. You can move on to the next one. Describe an experiment involving vertical forces to show that there is no net movement on an object in equilibrium. You may draw a diagram in the space provided. So we can draw, first to show the diagram, we can draw like a beam, something like this. And then we can draw uh, like a pivot and then we'll have weights on both sides so this weight let it be 20 newtons 20 newtons and then this one let it be 10 newtons or 30 newtons so that means the both moments should be equal so if the distance from here to here is 10 meters that means the moment for this one is going to be 10 times 20 which is going to be 200 so for this to be 200 we can divide 200 by 30 so it's going to be 6.7 approximately so if that means this distance is going to be 6.7 So the moment for this one is also going to be 200. So the object is in equilibrium. So to explain that, we, we already have a diagram, so we, didn't, we don't need to write much. But for a sh short explanation, we can say the anti-clockwise moment 
moment is equal to the clockwise moment is equal to the clockwise moment moment so if we have if you have a sufficient di diagram we don't need to add uh, much to write we can get the three points because of the diagram and the labels like the 30 newtons the 20 newtons and the distances let's move on to the next one this is the last question for today so the engine of an up unpowered toy train train is rolling at a constant speed on a low on a level track as shown in figure 3.1 the engine collides with a stationary toy truck and joins with it so this is the stationary toy truck and then this moving engine it moved and then crashed with a stationary toy truck before the collision the toy engine this toy engine was moving at 0.32 meters per second the mass of the engine is 0.5 kilograms calculate the momentum of the toy engine before the collision so before the collision momentum the formula of the momentum is momentum is equals to mass times velocity so the mass is 0 0.5 0 0.5 times 0 0.32 which is a velocity so the final answer is going to be 0 0.16 and the unit is going to be kilogram meter per second on the next one the mass of the truck is 30 kgs use the principal conservation of momentum calculate the speed of the joint engine and the truck immediately after collusion so we're given the mass of the truck now in this question we're told to use the principal conservation of momentum so this principal conservation of momentum states that the momentum before collusion is going to be the same as the momentum after collusion so the momentum before collusion we have it in the previous question which is 0 0.16 so we have 0 0.16 so for the momentum after collusion it's the sum of the masses of both objects times their speed the new speed so we're told to find the new speed so the sum of the mass is going to be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 that's going to be 0 0.8 kgs 0 0.8 kgs times the speed which we don't know so to find v we can do over 0 0.8 on both sides and then over 0 0.8 so the new speed is going to be 0 0.16 over 0 0.8 which is going to be 0 0.2 meters per second so that's our final answer 0 0.2 meters per second and then we can easily get three marks for that so that was it for today if you enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe and if you have any questions or suggestions make sure to drop them down in the comment thank you